skies are fifty shades of Finland My battery is so empty, man Rain is falling, the sky is gray I soon need to drive away Alright, welcome back to the Electric Seal. Today it's officially the greyest day of the year here in Finland. As you can see it's really dull, wet and grey. Quite miserable weather to be honest. And I'm here at the cabin. I just drove 350 kilometers with BYD Seal and the battery starts to be now quite empty so I need to charge it soon. And I thought what could be a better day to talk about charging safely in the rain and in wet conditions like this. Because that's what many EV owners are thinking about. Can I charge safely? Can I plug in the car safely in the rain? What does it require from the charger? And of course I will be also sharing my new charging setup here at the cabin that I'll use to charge the seal. And let's see how fast it will be able to top up the battery of the seal. So let's go! And moisture and electricity of course don't mix up that well, do they? And yet most of us charge outdoors at least part of the year. The thing is that your EV is fine. Basically all, all electric cars on the market, they are weatherproof, they are waterproof. Because otherwise the product wouldn't really work, would it? It's not a question about the car. But the quality and specs of EV chargers and wall boxes, they vary much more than the design of EVs do. Your EV is fine with charging in the rain if your charger is. And there are certain things in the chargers and wall boxes that is good to take into account when using them in wet conditions and in the rain. And today I will be showcasing my charging setup here at the cabin, the D11 kilowatts wall box, and we will see how it handles the proper wet day here at the lake house. And of course, how fast the seal here gets the range back in the battery. And thanks to D for providing this sample for review. When talking about rain, the key spec, which probably everybody knows, is the IP rating. And my socket here is the CEE socket. This is the big beautiful red socket, industrial grade, 16 amps in three phases socket. And like it says here, it's IP44. So that means it's suitable for outdoor use and it's uh, waterproof, weatherproof. Uh, enough. And then of course the D11 kilowatts uh, wall box, this one is rated 50, IP54 and that means it's sealed against rain and dust. Uh, so perfect for this kind of weather and outdoor use in general. So this setup, um, unless your socket uh, would sit under waterfall or something, <laughs> this is a proper and safe setup in terms of the IP ratings. Plugging in this um, wall box, this is a direct plug and play. Uh, you can also hardwire this uh, wall box, but uh, if you have CE socket available like I do, this is uh, totally a no-brainer. You just, you just plug it in to the CE socket and it's working. So, so let's do that. After connecting the plug to the socket, the wall box now powers on and here you have the LCD screen information visible. And I think actually this is one of the highlights of the D11 kilowatts wall box. The amount of information that this device gives you, that is really comprehensive. Of course there is the charging power, the amps and the voltage, uh, total charge amount, then uh, connection statuses, and the set level of the current, which I have now set to 16 amps here. And then there is the scheduled charging or the timer setting, as well as the duration of the charging session uh, visible here on the LCD screen. And with the touch button you can easily control the amps and you can switch between uh, uh, 6 amps, 8, 10, 13 and 16 is maximum. And this socket is able to provide that 16 amps in three phases, uh, that will produce the 11 kilowatts 
uh, which is the maximum that the European version of the seal here can take in AC charging. So this is a pretty sturdy setup uh, for a cabin. I will be able to charge the seal uh, usually uh, uh, in about six hours. Uh, if we think about 80% charge, for example, from 10% to 90%, which is the usual range, that will take that six hours or a little bit more. And of course, if you want to do completely full charge from 0% to 100%, 100% uh, with the seal, seal's battery size, um, which is pretty massive LFP battery of 82 kilowatt hours, that will then take um, about eight hours with this maximum charging power from the CE socket. And also this, this touch button here, if you press and hold, it will um, allow you to schedule this charging. So set the timer to eight hours. So uh, both the amps and the timer mode is uh, controlled by this touch button here. So that's pretty simple and easy. All right, but now let's plug in the seal. It has been that 350 kilometers uh, trip here to the cabin. So the seal definitely is thirsty. So finally here in the middle of this gray and rainy day, the thirsty seal is getting something to drink. And it's the good stuff, the 11 kilowatts that's coming in. And checking the car, it's reporting uh, 9.7. That's normal, of course. Not 100% goes to the car battery. There is always some loss, but basically the 10 kilowatts is the net that is coming, coming through. So the D11 kilowatts wall box here is showing um, 10.4 as the charging power. 15.6 uh, is the current and then the voltage is 222. We have been charging soon one kilowatt hour. Of course we ch started just four minutes ago. We have not uh, enabled the timer function. The car is connected okay. This is the RFID tag connection. Uh, that one I will show later uh, as well as the Wi-Fi connection. It is not connected to Wi-Fi at the moment and five minutes is the total uh, charging duration so far. But now let's talk about that safety with charging in the rain and harsh conditions. So under the hood here in this D11 kilowatt wall box there is something that not all wall boxes have um, and that is type B RCD which is residual current device with 6 milliampers DC detection. Now that is super technical term and really it doesn't really tell people what it is but basically it is a built-in safety device in, the, in this wall, wall box. Basically a safety circuit that is called a type B RCD and that sits inside the wall box and it constantly monitors the electricity flow. And in the unlikely event that something would go wrong this safety device instantly cuts the power before there's any damage. So that's the idea of this Type B RCD. And not all wall boxes have this. But I know some wall boxes have only Type A, and the Type A detects AC faults. But actually, what happens when you charge your EV with uh, AC, like I do here, I charge the BYD seal with AC, but basically it applies to any EV out there the car converts the AC power to DC power. And in case there would be even a really tiny DC leak that is detected by this D11 kilowatts wall box and it shuts things off immediately. Uh, plus, of course, there's a lot of protection in this device. There's built-in uh, over-voltage protection, under-voltage protection, there is overcurrent, ground fault, overheating, short circuit protection. So there's a lot of stuff actually inside the wall box. It is not just about that the charging works, but it's also about the peace of mind. I mean, the 11 kilowatts that I'm charging here, that is, of course, that is a quite, quite low power when you compare to DC charging, but it's still relatively powerful 
you know, AC charging ongoing. And the cable here is, is pretty sturdy one, a lot of electricity going through. So I want to have that peace of mind that in the very unlikely event that something could go wrong, the device can handle it. So really the rain protection is only one part of the story, the IP ratings that we went through. The other is what happens inside the wall box. And this one here is constantly checking the voltage, the current, temperature and any leakage. And if anything goes out of spec, you know, there could be a surge in the grid during a storm or something. Maybe there is moisture somewhere where it shouldn't be. Maybe it's even a few degrees too warm and the device shuts off. And that's what really lets me charge here at the lake house in full confidence, even when the weather is really not optimal. So the bottom line really is if anything goes off, it stops. That is the simple way to put it. Charging speed in terms of kilometers per hour is um, pretty solid 60 kilometers per hour at the moment. That is the charging speed when it's converted directly to the range uh, with the consumption that uh, I had on the way here. So 60 kilometers per hour uh, charging here at the cabin from the wall box. Uh, of course in the winter time that will be a bit lower, about 40, 40, 45 kilometers per hour if there is um, really cold, cold weather. But at the moment 60 kilometers per hour is, is what I'm pulling here from the wall box. Uh, of course it has to be mentioned that even though the wall box is IP54 rated, um, you cannot of course ever uh, submerge this to water. So it, it is not that waterproof that you could, you know, you could, like I mentioned, install it under a waterfall. <laughs> that's not, that's not uh, suitable. But for this kind of setup, that it occasionally gets splashes and water onto the case, that's completely fine. But, uh, but of course, it's always good to, when you think about the installation, uh, place it under a bit of uh, coverage. And same goes with the CE socket. Uh, the CE socket shouldn't be pointing uh, up uh, where the water could accumulate uh, then onto the socket, but instead a little bit downwards preferably or sideways is, uh, is good practice in the installation. And of course, uh, you know, if it now would be some thunderstorm or something, luckily it isn't, thunder and lightning, you know, being right above me, I would myself uh, stop charging for that moment and then continue later. So there are of course those occasions when it makes sense to just pause the charging and continue after a while. So the installation of this wall box is pretty simple. Um, you can easily fix it to the wall because there is this um, a kind of dedicated mounting plate, which is quick to uh, fix to the wall by screws. There's four holes for screws. Uh, this is pretty sturdy, but it is plastic, uh, which I think is not quite ideal. I would like this to be metal, like steel or aluminium or something. But it is plastic, it will do its job just fine. But uh, of course, like quality-wise, metal would be better. Uh, but anyway, this is quick to attach. You'll just um, then you just put this uh, in its place and slide it so that this clip uh, locks it into place. Of course, first you will attach this mounting plate to the wall. And when attaching it to the wall, just make sure that you have this raised side facing outwards, and then this uh, clip mechanism is is facing down like that. And connecting this charger to Wi-Fi is super easy. You just have to make sure that your phone is in Wi-Fi network and then you download the application to which you have the link and the QR code in the user manual. And with the mobile app you can then connect the charger to Wi-Fi. The app is called Tuya and the app has pretty solid user reviews. Four stars out of five. I think it's okay in this category. My experience in using the application is that it's very uh, straightforward and easy to use. Once you have added your DEV charger, you can then remotely control the charger. 
uh, with the application you can set the current you can set the timer function and of course start and stop the charging remotely using the application and now when i adjust the current from the application you can hear the device immediately reacting to that uh, change in the setting and besides the mobile app also what is handy is the rfid tags and these tags allow you to easily start and stop the charging session by just showing the card to this uh, center spot of the charging case and finally there is this cable holder i haven't yet installed this myself here at the cabin but this is um, super straightforward you just attach it to the wall and it provides you this um, neat place to put your connector when it's not in use all right as this uh, grayest day of the year is already turning into evening as a conclusion we had industrial grade plug we had weather sealed wall box which was plug and play and control from the app that is i would say what safe and convenient outdoor charging looks like and it works like a charm also when the weather is not optimal and of course the weather that we had today here in finland uh gray skies wet bit of drizzle it's not that abnormal it is i would say something that most of us probably deal with half of the year but nevertheless it's good to pay attention to those small details in the specifications of the charger device so that you have that peace of mind charging whatever is the weather and i think the d11 kilowatt wall box did well today and i have the confidence of using that also in the future i'll leave a link in the description of this video if you're interested in checking out the the D's wall box and hopefully you found this video useful please use the like button comment below and of course subscribe to the channel so thanks for watching and see you in the next one